Welcome. My name is Jesse and you are listening to The Wake Up Call. This show is about opening your eyes to how you've been living, bringing awareness to the standard you've been operating at, and helping you start living to your full potential. There are two ways I'll help you do this. One, by disciplining your mind, and two, by strengthening your body. It's time to take stock of your current performance and go to the next level. Let's do this. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wake Up Call. This is episode 152. The topic for this episode is going to be something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about something that maybe I haven't touched on enough, but something brought it to my awareness very recently. And that is this. Modern shoes are shit. There. Okay. I said it. All the big corporations and companies don't want you to know this. But most of the footwear options that are available at your local foot locker, you know, athlete's foot, and all of these types of places, they're, right. they're not actually that fucking good for you. They're probably doing you more harm than good. And the reason that I say this is because I've done my homework. I've done some digging. I've done some research into, you know, what constitutes a good shoe, what a shoe is designed to do. And what's actually on the market, you know, as a personal trainer and strength coach, and also as an athlete, I need to know what I'm wearing on my feet. I need to know what it's doing for my body. And I'm telling you now, most shoes aren't doing much for you. You might hear that and think to yourself, what the hell? Jesse's fucking lost the plot. But I'm going to explain a few things to you guys. Big shoe companies, think about how many hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars they put into marketing every single year. You know, the footwear industry is a billion dollar plus industry. These guys have a lot of marketing power behind them to, you know, say certain things and get people to wear certain products in the hopes that you will go and buy their shoe. What have I got to sell you right now? I'm not trying to sell you a specific type of fucking shoe. What I am trying to do is educate you and give you an understanding of, hey, just open your eyes, think about some of these concepts that I'm about to share with you, and see if I'm actually onto something now, all right? Footwear. Footwear, footwear, footwear. Lots of different styles, lots of different, air quotes, technologies out there. And here's the thing, the more technology that goes into a shoe doesn't inherently make it better just because it has more, air quotes, technology. What does that even mean? You've got more technology in the shoe, all right? <laughs> Having, <clears throat> all right, let's, let's, let's fucking, let's get to the, to the crux of the matter here. More technology in your shoe does not equal better foot function for you. And... I'm actually going to say that it could actually impede your natural foot function, okay? First and foremost, ask yourself, what is the role of a pair of shoes? Like, what is it actually designed to do? It's basically designed to keep you away from the elements, sharp objects, uh, to make sure that you don't damage the skin, uh, the bones, and any of the nerve endings. So basically, it's a protective mechanism, all right? It's a protective layer. That's first and foremost what it's designed to do, protect you. So it's not designed to make you move in a specific way or provide you with extra support or extra stability. You have all of that within your own body and your own two feet. You don't need a fucking $300 pair of shoes to do that for you. You already have that. Your body has the technology within itself. Like, let's think about it. Your body knows what it needs to do. We've been around for thousands of years. Let it do its thing. Arch support, heel support, midfoot support. Like how much artificial fucking support do you need? Like seriously, in a foot, in a shoe, how much fucking support do you need? You know, oh, I need support for my big toe. I need support for my little toe. I need support for my arch. I need support for my midfoot. I need support for my delicate heel. Like, should we just fucking wrap you in cotton wool? Jesus Christ, the amount of technology and protective shit that goes into footwear these days is, it's absurd. Like, people can't handle any stress 
or that's what is being portrayed at least by these companies. Hey, you need to support this. You need to stabilize this. You need more technology here. Fuck that. Your feet and your body as a unit, as a system, has everything it needs to work and function optimally. You don't need a fucking special type of shoe with a special type of, air quotes, technology to make you function like a normal human. You're already a fucking normal human, all right? And this is the thing. Shoes are meant to enhance your performance, not detract from it. But that's actually what shoes are doing these days. It's actually taking more away from you than it's giving you, all right? Let's let's break it down and let's keep it very civil. Let's let's go back to the human skeleton, the human body as an organism, right? When you are standing barefoot, this is your body at its prime. You have no heel raise, your foot is completely flat on the floor. You have no arch support. There is no narrow co-box to constrict or restrict your movement. There are no confined spaces. Your feet and your toes can do whatever the fuck they want. There is nothing around them that's trapping them, restricting them, or forcing them to move in a certain way. Your feet, your toes, your ankles can move exactly as they want, exactly as they were designed to do. Modern shoes don't allow you to demonstrate that capacity. In fact, it restricts it. Now, the information that I'm about to share with you regarding shoes, what footwear, I'm not talking about specific brands, okay? I'm not pro this brand and con this brand. I'm trying to share with you a concept, an idea, a principle, a framework that you can take away and then find the footwear that works for you based upon these principles, okay? Now, the information that I'm about to share, it's not my own. I didn't create this, okay? Uh, I learned this from a very, very smart podiatrist. His name is Andy Bryant. You can look him up on Instagram. Just type in Andy Bryant podiatrist, and I'm sure his page or his account will pop up. But he shared a concept. This is, a, this is I can't even remember where I first, when I first learned this, but I learned it, and it stuck with me ever since. Okay, you ready? The best type of shoes subscribe to the WTFF framework okay wtff stands for what the fucking fuck no it doesn't <laughs> although that's a great scene from Step Brothers, by the way nancy loses her shit and goes what the fucking fuck but anyway wtff stands for the following wide thin flat and flexible those are the four elements that you want in a good shoe or in a shoe those elements are what make a shoe good. Not a lot of technology there. It's wide. So that your feet have enough space, your toes have enough space to move freely and splay. Okay? So you wouldn't try and shove your hand in a glove that's too small for your hand. So why on earth would you do that with your feet and your toes? Crickets just as I suspected. The shoe should also be uh, thin. It needs to be thin so that you can feel the ground and have better proprioception. So proprioception is, uh, it's a sensation. So it's a, it helps you map where your body is in space, okay? And it also provides better strength for your feet. So, you know, you have, uh, str <laughs> you have muscles in your feet. Do you want them to be weak or do you want them to be strong? Because if you're putting, you know, the proverbial cotton wool or a piece of big foam underneath you, you're not able to produce nor absorb the force that you put into the ground. It's, it's all being dissipated and absorbed by this artificial foam pad. So, you know, cush, uh, cushioning is a myth. And it's something that people have very much, in my opinion, have become over-reliant on. Oh, it hurts when my heel hits the ground. Well, maybe you don't hit your fucking heel on the ground so hard. 
Oh, it's a novel concept. All right. So it's wide, it's thin, it has to be flat. Why flat? Most shoes have a heel elevation on them, all right? Most shoes these days have a heel elevation, meaning your heel is higher than your toes or the forefoot. So basically, to put it simply, it's like wearing high heels. It's the same fucking concept. You go from being flat-footed to propping yourself up with a pair of high heels, all right? What that does is it reduces your ability to move at your ankle joint. It reduces your ability to dorsiflex or bend at the ankle joint. So this is why people these days can't fucking do deep squats because they can't bend at the ankle. So they bend at their knees or they bend at their back and they fold forwards. That's why people cannot squat with an upright torso because you get put in these shoes with a big heel lift and you do 10,000 steps, 20,000 steps, one year, two year, 10 years, 20 years. What do you think happens to the ankle? It adapts to this new stimulus or this stress that you've given it by saying, hey, okay, you don't need that extra, uh, extra ankle range of motion. I'm going to take it away. I don't need it. Wicked. And then your body develops a deficiency at the ankle joint. And I don't know about you, but... I'm a fairly active person. I play sport. I lift weights. I've got a two-year-old daughter. I want to compete in more obstacle course races. I've got to do a lot of fucking moving. And the way that I move, the way that we as humans locomote and move is with our fucking legs. It's with our feet. And if you don't have good ankle range of motion, your body will find a solution. It will find a workaround. It will steal movement and make you pay the price somewhere else. Whether it's your knees, whether it's your hips, whether it's your lower back, whether it's all of the above. All right, so there has to be flat. Shoes need to be flat. The shoes you wear also need to be flexible. They need to be malleable. They should be able to move freely. Now, why do you want a shoe that can move freely? Well, that's because in your foot, you have 26 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 muscles, tendons, and ligaments. So you tell me, do you want them to be glued and stuck in a bundle, unable to move? No. You want them to be free to move and not be clamped down and constrained inside of a rigid toe box where all they want to do is escape and move freely. This is your hands and your feet are the same type of joint. My hands can move like this. Your toes can move like this. They don't need to be stuck in this tight little fucking box. Set them free. Let them move as they're designed to move. But if you put them in a small shoe or in a toe box that's too narrow for your feet and your toes to be able to move apart, then they're not going to work to their full capacity. Okay, I'm just going to let you settle on that and digest that information briefly. Mind blown. Jesse drops the mic and walks off the stage. Big rousing round of applause. Uh, jokes aside, but those are the criteria. This is the criteria for a good foot, uh, for a good shoe. The criteria for a good shoe is as follows it must be wide, it must be thin, it must be flat, and it must be flexible. That's the criteria. WTFF. If your shoe does not have all four of those things in it, you're probably leaving performance on the table and you're probably making your body work harder than it needs to in some way, shape or form. WTFF, that's the criteria for spotting a good shoe. Not only for the most natural foot function, but also for the performance enhancement benefits. Hey now. And this is the thing when it comes to footwear. Let me explain something. Here we go. When it comes to spotting a good shoe, the shoe should be foot shape, not shoe shaped. Let me explain. If I have a dress shoe that looks like this, 
that has a narrow toe box, very pointy toes at the end. How the fuck am I going to get my five toes that want to splay and shove them into this space here that's really narrow and doesn't allow me to move freely? Hint, it's not going to fucking happen unless I try and fit a square peg in a round hole. So dress shoes, they have heel elevation. No good. Traditional runners also don't look like feet. They look like shoes. They have this narrow toe box. Again, I am forced to try and shove my toes in a space that they don't want to go. They want to be set free, and my toes and my feet want to move freely, and this doesn't allow me to do that. It also has a very high support system, i.e. cushion, and heel elevation, which, again, as I mentioned, reduces ankle range of motion. The last option we are left with is what is known as a minimalist shoe. This has a wide toe box, which means, oh, my toes now have more space. They can move freely. Fantastic. They're not trapped in a cage. It's flat from heel to toe. And it's very thin. There's not a lot of cushion to it. Look at that. I can squish it. I can fold it in half and I can roll it up in a ball. Just like that. Very malleable. This right here, my friend, is the winner. Minimalist footwear subscribes to WTFF. It's wide, it's thin, it's flat, and it's flexible. That's your criteria for selecting good shoes if you want to get the most out of your feet, ankles, performance, and reduce your chance of injury. And why do I say injury? It's not because it just comes off the tongue. It's because if you're not strengthening your entire body, starting at the ground, that's always going to be your limiting factor. And as I mentioned, the way that we travel is through our legs, which are attached to our feet. So doesn't that sound like a problem to you? Yeah? Footwear needs to be foot-shaped, not shoe-shaped. But most shoes aren't. Most people, unfortunately, are conditioned to buy what's on TV, what they see on advertisements, what's in the fucking magazines, what's trending, or what other people wear. Oh, so-and-so celebrities wearing these fucking Yeezys. Ugh, let me just go and fucking vomit. You know, and people just fucking jump on it. They're like, oh, LeBron wears these shoes. I'll go get them. And like I understand it, you know, it all started, well, it started beyond Michael Jordan. But, you know... They're Jordans. Everybody has to wear the Jordans. I get it. You know, but just understand the consequences. It's the old fashion over function problem. Now, another way that we can establish what kind of shoes are good for you and which shoes aren't good for you is this. Please tell me, would you want to squat with really heavy weights on a mattress? No? Oh, that's interesting. Why not? Well, it's all squishy and it's unstable. Yeah, Roger that. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to squat heavy weights on a mattress either. Now, what about a heavy deadlift on a big piece of foam? A really big, squishy piece of foam. Would you like to do that? No. Oh, that's interesting. Why not? Oh, because I can't get a good footing and I'm going to move all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Now, would you like to try a heavy overhead press? on an unstable surface, something that's a bit squishy and has a bit of give to it. No, you wouldn't? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, exactly, that proves my point. Stop lifting in squishy fucking shoes. Stop doing your weight training in runners and shoes that have this a heel that's this fucking big and that's soft and squishy. Stop doing it. Search for a shoe that ticks the WTFF box. Because if it does, and you wear those shoes consistently, you will improve your foot and your ankle function. It will make you instantly stronger, more stable, and increase your range of motion. So those are the benefits. All right, those are the benefits. Don't make yourself weaker and more unstable with squishy shoes. 
even if they are the latest and greatest on the market, even if they have the best marketing strategy. Do better. Dig further. Do more research. And the reason I'm sharing this information for you about shoes and subscribing to the WTFF framework is because last week I had somebody come in for an initial consultation and I was just kind of scanning and I noticed her footwear. I noticed her shoes. They look pretty new, probably fresh out of the box very recently or not too far in the past. She bought them and I asked her about them and they were black and she told me they cost 300 bucks and she looked at me, she's like, no, no good. And I was like, no, no good. And the reason they're no good is because they got a big cushion, big heel lift, which steals your ankle range of motion, makes you unstable. And it means that the force that you put into the ground gets absorbed by the shoe, not the earth, which by therefore makes you weaker. So unfortunately, this particular person spent 300 bucks on a pair of shoes that she was perhaps told was the latest and greatest or very, very good for arch support, foot function, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, not the best thing for her. So even when I have people come into my training facility and they've got big squishy shoes, I actually get them to take them off. So they train, in, they do some of the exercises barefoot or in socks. And more often than not, the result is exactly the same. Oh, I'll ask them. It's like they'll do their exercise, whether it's squats or deadlifts or whatever. And I'll ask them, how'd that feel? And they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yep. And then I'll say, take your shoes off and we'll do it again. And then after that, I'll say, hey, how did that feel? And they're like, oh, that felt heaps better. And I'll be like, what was better about it? I just felt more stable, more grounded. You know, better connection to the floor. I could, I just felt that, you know, I, I popped up easier. Or they'll give me some kind of feedback that, hey, going barefoot is superior than wearing those big squishy shoes. And that's the reason that I'm sharing this with you guys. I learned this stuff a few years ago, and I don't want to say it changed my life, but it changed my life. <laughs> All of the shoes that I own and wear now, except for my football boots, because there's no real football boots on the market that subscribe to this, unfortunately. Um, all of my shoes subscribe to this framework. You know, WTFF. They're wide, so my feet and my toes can move freely. They're thin, so I can feel the floor and I can restore my ankle range of motion. I can move as a human is designed to move. They're flat. So I can feel the ground, so I can move as I'm designed to, wide, thin, flat, and they're flexible. So again, I have adequate motion through all of those ligaments, joints, tendons, and muscles that I just explained. So my hope is that by sharing this message with you here today, that you can save your money. You can make a better and a more educated decision and get more from your footwear. And as a result, get more from your body. WTFF, what the fucking fuck. <laughs> Wild, thin, flat, and flexible, guys. That's what you're chasing. So if your feet hurt, all right, I am going to finish with a bit of a, a truth bomb just because it needs to be said, all right? If your feet hurt without any support from your shoe, ask yourself why. Below are some observations as to why your feet might hurt from not having a support or a cushion in your shoe. Maybe you're just too heavy. You know, carrying around weight is hard. And if you're carrying away, if you're carrying around more weight than necessary, um, it's going to add up to more joint stress. Which joints, you ask? All of them. So if your feet hurt, you know, gravity plus load, it only goes in one direction, down. What's at the fucking bottom of the chain? Your feet. So if you're too heavy, except expect your feet to bear the brunt. Maybe you're too weak. Maybe you've just got no fucking strength in your feet whatsoever. Maybe you're too deconditioned. 
Maybe you've just been spoiling your feet in this nice fluffy cushion for too long. Solution, buy shoes that subscribe to the WTFF footwear protocol, uh, spend more time barefoot, get leaner and get stronger. There's a solution. You can accept it, you can discard it. That's really your choice. All I've tried to do is present information, put my argument forward, so you can make a decision based upon that knowledge that you now have. So if you're still listening, I want to say thank you very much for uh, giving me your time and attention. And I do have an ask. If you found this information useful, if it shook some ideas into your brain or made you think about shoes and footwear differently than you've ever had before, I ask that you pay the fee and share this via social media. I don't advertise this. I don't put, you know, I don't have huge marketing budgets and stuff to get this message out there like these big fucking companies and corporations do. So if you care about the information that I've provided and you've got good value and benefit out of it, copy the link, share it on your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, send it to a colleague at work via email, you know, send it to somebody via carrier pigeon, do what you got to do and help me out by spreading this word. It really does go a long way, even if it's me impacting you, which is one person, and then you impact another person. Beautiful. We've gone from two people to three people. And then if that person gets the same benefit, it goes from three people to four people, four people to eight people. And this is how we get a bit of a movement happening and get people out of the footwear that's no good for their fucking body. So guys, that's my ask. I'm giving you a simple framework. Go and do some research. Research minimalist footwear. Uh, there are some, there's a lot more brands on the market now. Vivo Barefoot is one I have used for a long time. Uh, Zero with an X, so X-E-R-O. I've not actually tried them, but I know they do minimalist footwear as well. Uh, Vibram Five Fingers. I love my Vibram Five Fingers. If you don't know what they are, Google them. They are sexy as hell. If you've got a significant other, they will love you even more for it. <laughs> I know my wife does. Not. Um, I'm not sure why. But there's a lot of different shoes on the market now. You know, going back five, ten years, there, there was there was fuck all available. Now it's available because more and more people realize how important it is and they're trying to get this message out there. So do your research, do some digging, and spread this message around, please. And thank you. I will love you long time. Guys, thanks for your attention for the last, you know, 28, 30 minutes. I appreciate it. I'm gonna cut it short there. And uh yeah, go forth, find some shoes, try them out and see how you can get stronger, move better, and stop relying on artificial support. And you don't need it. You've got everything you need within your body. It's time to unlock it and unleash it. Thanks for listening, guys. Until next time, WTFF. If you loved the wake-up call, found it entertaining, or got some benefit out of listening, I would appreciate you helping me to spread the word. Please share it with a friend or on social media so that you can pay it forward and give someone else the opportunity to improve themselves like you just have. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon for another episode.